welcome back one and all we have a little bit of a paint job to do uh, on this uh, Chevy truck here let me uh, show you what we got I did rust repair on this truck I'm out here did rust repair on this truck uh, about a this is less than a year ago but I actually cut the whole part of the bedside out and replaced the whole piece and at some point I don't know if I left a hole in my weld I'm, I'm assuming that's what happened here and it started rusting moisture got in the in the mud and started rusting it back out and but right here I have no idea what that is I didn't even do body work there I I don't know but we're gonna grind it out and there's a place there too that's definitely a hole in the weld there because that patch panel only came to here so I know that's what that is but I'm gonna start grinding on this thing weld some metal in it and Hopefully I can get this done really quick. So I got plenty of other stuff to do. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Let's see if I can confirm my theory here. Well, here's what we got on this side it's a couple of places where I missed uh, missed welding or it was just some rust that I welded over and something else happened I'm not exactly sure what the world happened here but I don't know I ain't gonna try to say or make excuses I messed it up so that's why we're here and I'm fixing it this I have no idea it just looks like I just missed everything I put that patch panel here so I don't know what I don't know what in the world happened with all this, but we're here now, so we're gonna fix it. All right, now I'm just gonna take my piece of metal I got. Trying to make me some sort of a pattern here. Uh, I marked my bend where the bend's gonna have to be. And
There's metal work done. See where my patch was. Weld her back in. Looks like, yep, she's holding solid. Thought it looked like it blew through there. That hole that was right there just went ahead and filled it in. And I was tapping on it and it just kept pushing through where my weld did not hold. So, uh, from the first time around. So, uh, and this time too. So, I got it in. It's, it's looking really good. So, I'm going to get to start body working. All right, this stuff's still a little tacky, but I'm going to use this 80. Just try to knock off the high spots while it's still a little wet. And it'll just flake right off. First, I need to, I need to tape off that molding before I... Scratch it. I don't have any of my good tape with me. I gotta use this cheap stuff. Here's another trick. Take a razor blade, a little bit of mud on there, and that will take care of your pinholes. Use a razor blade, that way you can scrape the excess off. So you can scrape the excess off right when you're doing it. So you just go and lightly sand over it, Done, ready to paint. If you get it good enough sometimes, you don't even have to sand it. That razor blade just takes everything right off. But I'm gonna build it a little bit, so, because I am gonna sand it.
right, that looks good. Hopefully this doesn't harden up on me. And I don't see any over here. Yep, there's one. Alright. Is there any more here? Yep, there's one. There we go. All right, I'm going to use 400 now to uh, feather this out to get a border for the primer to stop at because if the primer doesn't get in the 180 grit, grit scratch is good you'll sh you'll see them show up a little bit later on after it's painted Also, I'm gonna go ahead and use my 800 and uh, wet wet sand the whole bedside, or at least most of it, because I do see some dirt in there from last time I painted it. Uh, this is a work truck, so I'm not really concerned about being perfect. But uh, go ahead and wet sand it to get it ready for paint. So uh, as soon as this primer's done, sand the primer, I can just go ahead and get right into painting it. And I use 800 because the 800 you can clear right over and it ain't going to hurt nothing. Because clear will cover 800 grit scratches. And you don't want to get water uh, close to your mud because mud is uh, like a sponge, it's porous. So it'll soak that water right up in it. Then you've got problems down the road. Now for the rest of it the, that I did in 800, because most of this laid down pretty good. And that was just to knock the high spots off, knock the orange bill down and the and the, the dirt nibs that was still in it. And I probably will not buff it whenever it's all said and done. I'm going to try to get a clean enough paint job where I don't have to. Just because it is it is just a work truck. This guy doesn't care. He's, he, just want, he just doesn't want to rust out. This is a He said this is going to be his last truck, so he wants it to last for a long time. So... Uh, so now I'm just going to take his gray scuff pad and go over it again to make sure because there's still some shiny spots here and there. Uh, go ahead and knock them all them down uh, to get it ready for clear.
All right, I'm gonna put my drill on this. Since I don't have a big fancy mixing machine, this is it. It works just fine. All right. Now she's all mixed up. My paint cups I just got. Uh, we mix this to four to one on the scale here, four parts primer, then one part uh, activator, which I'm not mixing a lot because I don't have much to prime. We're going to go to the twos. And activator. I just use Nason primer. I've always used that here in my shop. I I really like it. It works good. It's not high dollar primer, so some people don't like it because they, they don't spend five hundred dollars for a gallon of primer. But I like it. I've never had any problems with it. Like Nason Clear, also I use their Clear, and I've never had any issues with it either. Their products have been really good to me. All right, I had to shut my exhaust fan off so you could hear me. But here, whoa, whoa, that's too close. There we go. Here it is. You can still see there's a little bit of wet primer. But everything's primed up. And uh, tonight or early tomorrow morning, I'm going to come back and uh, sand her down and get her ready for paint. Hopefully I have this thing painted tomorrow. going to get to sanding this primer down and get her ready for some paint.
Here it is, all taped up, ready to step in here tomorrow evening and throw some paint on it. Also got a mirror cap to paint for someone too. Uh, it's like off a late model Cadillac. It just needs to be sprayed black. So I told him while I'm spraying stuff, I'd spray it too. So we'll see you tomorrow. Well, I was trying to get my torpedo heater so I could heat this thing up before I paint it. And while I'm painting, just to bump the temperature up in here because it's a little too chilly to be painting. It's about 58, which ain't, it ain't horrible, but it's still a little cold. But I don't think I got enough kerosene in it that'll do much, but we'll get it going here in a little bit anyways and try it. gonna give it a final wipe down here and we're gonna start slinging some base on it try to get this thing knocked out tonight so I can give it back to the guy tomorrow hopefully I won't have to buff it See if I can't get something going. And once I start, once I start painting, you probably won't be able to hear me because the exhaust fan's loud and that torpedo heater's loud. So we'll just turn up the music. <laughs>
All right, here it is. Done and done and done. And I do not miss painting or bodywork at all. It does have some dirt in it, but I think I'm going to let it go. And here's this mirror cap. Went ahead and threw some paint on it. Threw a little black on it. It's just a single stage. I didn't spend a whole lot of time. Now, now I just did this and forgot to record it. But I did go back and recoat because I did put rockers in this truck too. I went back and coated the inside of the rockers again. And I did the bedsides this time. Last time I didn't. That's probably why this rust come back. Uh, this 3M cavity wax. It is really good stuff. I've used it on other rust repair jobs and it does it does the trick i mean it just coats the whole inside of it with wax so whatever water hits it it runs right out the first hole it can find but this the the applicator kit comes with big long wands and when they get into the cavity that they, they spray 360 degrees so it coats every square inch all the way down through there and i, I didn't record me doing it but i just did the inside the beds the inside the bed sides and the rockers again just hopefully the ru this rust doesn't come back. But here's the part numbers on everything. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it. Local parts stores can get it. That's where I got this stuff. Um, but they can they can get it too. It's going to cost you about 60 bucks um, for the, the cavity wax and the wand kit. But once you get done with the wands, uh, take air compressor and blow air through the nozzles to clean them out. And they'll last a long time. You can keep using them. Here she is out in the sun. All looking really good if I get my shadow out of it. Looks like nothing ever happened there. Cool deal. All right, yep, I got my hood on because it's cold. Uh, that's gonna be it for this one. Uh, hope you all enjoyed me do it, suffering through my warranty work but uh, that's all done and there is a pinstriping video coming up next uh, I've got a tour pack to do on a Harley so I'm going to knock it out hopefully tonight so uh, the video will be up probably four days after this one so I'm trying to do videos about every four days but it just depends on if, what kind of time I've got uh, sometimes I just don't have time to do it like that but uh, so far it's been working out But and uh, we'll see you later